In the words of famous astrophysicist and casual singer-songwriter Brian May, who wants to live forever? As it turns out, the answer is lots of people do, and they always have. The oldest known piece of literature, The Epic of Gilgamesh, includes a human quest for immortality. This is by no means a new concept or desire, and there seems to have been no limit to what people were willing to do in attempting to outrun the Grim Reaper. By some metrics, who've done a pretty good job of extending that human lifespan. Of course, the most notable metric that people love to use, average life expectancy, is actually extremely flawed. To start, detailed records of that sort of information no longer exist if they ever did, so researchers have had to make a lot of inferences and assumptions. Based on the best information available, the average life expectancy for a person born in ancient Rome was, wait for it, 25 to 30 years. I would already be 10 to 5 years dead. Now, this is obviously not the whole story, and it's why this metric can be a bit misleading. In ancient Rome, there was a roughly 50% chance that anyone who lived to see their fifth birthday would also live to see their 50th birthday. The population would begin falling off at an increased rate once they reached 50 years old, but roughly 2.5% of ancient Romans would make it to age 80 or higher. That all makes the 20 to 30 year life expectancy seem a bit confusing until you remember that there was only a 50% chance that anyone would actually live to see their fifth birthday. Holy sh the past, everybody. By dramatically lowering child mortality, we have been able to bring up average life expectancy. But what about the other end? We've made some progress there as well, and the percentage of people that live to be 80 or even older has massively increased, with about two-thirds of Americans living at least that long. Changes in diet, medicine, and more have resulted in a greater population of senior citizens than the world has ever seen before. Now, although we've greatly improved how many people survive into these advanced stages of life, we've done very little to improve how long the oldest among us can survive. Scientists believe that the first centenarians, people who lived to reach the age of 100, emerged in roughly 2500 BC. If ancient people were already able to live for a full century without any of our modern medicine and possibly without even basic sanitation, why haven't we been able to push that barrier even further? How long will science actually allow us to live. The inescapable clutches of death. How long a human being can live is a hotly contested subject among scientists. Some scientists believe that there is an absolute limit on how long a person can live, with that limit being roughly between 125 and 150 years. Others believe that the first person that will live to be a thousand has already been born. So let's examine that pessimistic argument first. Here is a knowledge bomb for you from one of the doctors out of the Institute for Aging Research in New York. Quote, Aging is the strongest risk factor for all age-related diseases, including heart disease, cancer, stroke, etc. Now, this sounds pretty obvious, and that's because it is obvious, but it's meant to highlight a specific point. Your body does not simply die as a result of being old. Being old makes you more susceptible to things that will kill you. Thus far, this has been unavoidable. Though medical science has certainly found cures and treatments for numerous diseases, we have yet to find a cure for cancer, Alzheimer's, or the existence of heart attacks. As our bodies age, they become damaged, which makes us more prone to these deadly diseases. There are hundreds of different theories on exactly how and why this works, but there just is no general consensus. One of the most prominent theories for the last 65 years or so is the free radical theory that claims the damage done to the body is the result of free radicals produced produced by dissolved oxygen and radiation, which cause molecular damage, and that our body loses the ability to repair this damage as we get older. Research has also linked our ability to repair the damage to the body's production of NAD, or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Can't believe I got that out in the first go. Recent research has called into question both the free radical theory and the idea that increasing an aging person's supply of NAD can do anything to delay or reverse the effects of aging, but you can still buy some supplements to boost your NAD levels. There's no evidence that these supplements will help you in any way, but you know, at least they're probably not poisonous, just maybe a waste of your money. But the fact that hundreds of theories exist about the nature of aging should probably be a pretty good hint that we're just not terribly close to cracking the secrets of immortality. It's disappointing. I know. Since we don't fully understand the problem yet, it'll be pretty difficult to accidentally blunder our way into a solution. 
But since aging doesn't actually kill us, it just makes us more prone to fatal conditions, and since there is often a genetic factor associated with the risk of fatal conditions like heart disease, perhaps genetics are the key. Could enhanced longevity be that next step in human evolution? Well, Nah, probably not. Natural selection is a powerful tool, but it's unlikely to help us in this endeavor. An undesirable gene that results in a high probability of infant mortality will likely be bred out of the population because most of the people who inherit the gene will die before they can reproduce. Even a gene that tends to result in death in a person's 20s or 30s is likely to be eliminated. It could be passed on, but once the parents died, their helpless and abandoned offspring would have little chance of survival. Keep in mind that this process was taking place tens or hundreds of thousands of years ago. We, uh, the science of science fiction, understand that being an orphan in modern times is absolutely not a death sentence, it's how you become Batman. Anyway, what about those genes that would increase a person's risk of fatal disease or once they reach 80 or 100? That's long enough to have grandchildren, or even great-grandchildren, so it's unlikely that natural selection is really going to be any help in any way. The scientists that believe there is a firm ceiling on how long a human could live are more focused on another aspect of elderly life, and this is a person's quality of life. Though we aren't seeing people live longer and longer, we are seeing a large amount of people live to extremely advanced ages, with an estimated 573,000 centenarians currently alive throughout the world. But living to 100 or longer would probably suck if you had been bedridden since your 60th birthday. These scientists believe that people should focus on diet and exercise. These, combined with medical advancements, can allow people to remain healthy and active much later in life. But as we said, this is all the pessimistic point of view. The research used to propose a hard limit on human longevity also tends to rely on current and historical data. This makes sense, because we can't see the future, but critics would argue that they aren't thinking about the future at all. The conclusions were drawn by analyzing massive data sets of populations and how long they lived and noting that while the number of 100, 105, and even 115-year-olds were increasing, that other limit wasn't being pushed to or even beyond the current record of 122, which was set in 1997. It's a pretty big sample size that makes a reasonable argument that there may be a limit to human longevity and that the 122-year-old Jian Calmens was an outlier. However, the scientists on the other side of this debate aren't exactly arguing this point. They agree that people will continue to age and die without some sort of major intervention. So how about some sort of major intervention? Methuselarity. First of all, the bad news. You're still going to have to take care of your body if you want to live longer. Though there are scientists that believe extreme longevity to be possible, even if we were to unlock the secrets of biological immortality, it wouldn't give you any magical powers. Sure, you wouldn't age and could theoretically live forever, but you could still be hit by a car, have a heart attack from eating too much McDonald's, or die from some infectious disease. After all, those immortal jellyfish may be biologically immortal, but they haven't overrun the ocean since they frequently just wind up as shark food. But the good news is that we don't need to discover biological immortality for you to live to a thousand years. We just need to discover the next step. In ancient Rome, average life expectancy may only have been 25 to 30 years, but that has steadily increased, and the average life expectancy in the United States is now 77. That progress took thousands of years, so obviously it's been a slow process. However, it doesn't have to stay that way. There is a concept called longevity escape velocity. It's a similar principle to the technological singularity, except it deals exclusively with life expectancy rather than human technology as a whole. Currently, any advances we make that could extend a person's life are small, and they take ages to accomplish. But theoretically, we're going to hit a point where all these advancements just start accelerating. Let's say, oh, we make a breakthrough that extends the average life expectancy by 20 years. Then, 19 years later, oh, we make another one. Though that rate could theoretically continue to accelerate, it doesn't even need to. As long as each advancement extends the average life expectancy by longer than it took to reach that breakthrough, anyone who's alive and healthy when the process begins should be able to reap the full benefits. Because of its similarity to the singularity, this has also been referred to by Aubrey de Grey as Methuselarity, a reference to 969-year-old Methuselah from the Book of Genesis. Aubrey was the chief science officer of the SENS Research Foundation, a nonprofit organization founded to research engineering negligible senescence, a fancy way of saying that they were trying to stop aging. Aubrey was fired from the foundation in 2021 after allegedly obstructing probes into his alleged sexual harassment, which may lead one to believe he was inspired to study the 
this particular field by Matthew McConaughey's character in Dazed and Confused. Despite the allegations of misconduct, Aubrey remains one of the most vocal and most often cited proponents of longevity, insisting that aging should be classified as a disease to increase public interest and funding in the research. Unfortunately, very little of substance has come from their efforts. Though none of the proposals or assertions have been disproven, we also lack the knowledge and technology to prove any. The Methuselarity may be a fun and difficult to pronounce concept, but it remains entirely theoretical. Other scientists have been taking more practical steps, though uh, they've only been working with mice and worms so far. A study from 1943 first showed that calorie restriction in mice can extend their life by as much as 50%. A more recent study showed the certain benefits were not present in rhesus monkeys who had their caloric intake restricted, but an even more recent study claims that adult humans have shown the same effects in the short term, though long-term effects annoy you. No. Now, before any of you start thinking you could starve yourself to immortality, calorie restriction basically means just not overeating. It's the same thing as any healthy weight loss regimen, and you still need to eat enough to avoid malnutrition. One of the most brute force methods to extending our lifespan is to use stem cells to grow new organs people. It doesn't delay or prevent aging, and is only a band-aid solution. But swapping out your old kidneys for a fresh pair can prolong the life of someone who would have otherwise died of organ failure. But of all the possible advances that may take place, the most promising area is genetic engineering. Molecular biologist David Sinclair, working out of Harvard Medical School, has managed to reverse the aging process in mice. By injecting proteins into old cells that turn them into stem cells, they were able to essentially reset back to the original, younger form. The process worked on muscle tissue and in the brain as well, removing signs of dementia and restoring memory. This is very new research, so human tests are likely far away, but David is confident that we will see this within our lifetime. Another possible breakthrough comes from nematode worms, often used in aging research since their entire life cycle lasts only a few weeks. Scientists found that causing a specific mutation in their insulin signaling pathway would double their lifespan, and another mutation in the TOR pathway could increase it by 30%. However, when one worm was given both mutations, it increased its lifespan by 500%. Now, we only share about 70% of our DNA with these worms, much lower than other test animals like mice, but both the insulin signaling pathway and TOR pathway were passed down through us through evolution, so these same mutations should be possible in humans. Will they have the same results? That's an entirely different question. It may take some time before this is ready for human testing, but there shouldn't be any difficulty finding volunteers who'd like to be the first person to live to 500. Wrap up. Currently, senescence seems to be the unavoidable fate of nearly every multicellular organism except immortal jellyfish and possibly the hydra. Average life expectancy has increased, but we seem to be approaching a limit. If you take care of your body, have perfect genes with no predisposition to any disease, and can avoid dying in some unfortunate accidents, just maybe you might live to be 125. But if the current scientific research turns out to be applicable to humans as well, the only limit on how long a person may live might be their bank accounts. The gene-altering method used in worms has the potential to greatly extend everyone's lives on a one-time basis, but the stem cell procedure could possibly be repeatable. If that's the case, and these techniques are effective in humans, instead of using plastic surgery or expensive creams to try and look younger, you could just reverse the aging process of your body, and it would actually be as if you were 20, 30, or even 40 years younger.